ETW TV 13. Coverage you can count on. Up next on TV 13 News at 6, folks all along the Grand Strand are cleaning up today after at least one twister unexpectedly hits the area over 24 hours ago. You're going to get live team coverage. And the Carolina Amphitheater welcomes its opening act. You'll see how folks are getting ready for the Godfather of Soul. Melinda has your weekend forecast and Rob has a preview of Daytona's Pepsi 400. Stay tuned. Your news starts right now. This is TV 13 News at 6. Coverage you can count on. And I could see the wind started to get up, and uh, things started flying. And then I seen a phone play, and then uh, everybody's trying to get me in the room, and I was videotaping it. And some of it's kind of shaky, but uh, it was pretty hectic. A vacationer describes watching Mother Nature's fury just feet away from his Grand Strand Hotel window. And despite this frightening scene, no one was seriously injured from yesterday's multiple tornadoes. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Caitlin Schechter reporting from Florence. And reporting from Myrtle Beach's Ocean Boulevard, I'm Mitch Davis. This is where much of the damage has happened to some of the oceanfront hotels here. The National Weather Service still is not sure just how many tornadoes hit Myrtle Beach over 24 hours ago. Reports indicate between one and five. They hit during the peak of the summer tourist season. Fourth of July is the busiest week of the year here on the Grand Strand. The lucky thing is, though, no one was seriously hurt. But this tornado narrowly misses the Tropical Winds Hotel. Robert Balkum and his family never expected to see one up close, especially on vacation. There's a lot of concern. First of all, it's sort of fun because it's something different, new, a laugh and a joke, and it turned to tears real quick. The day after, it's quiet around the Henson's camper at Spring May Beach. Troy Ann is bruised and scraped from the family's frantic attempt to reach shelter at the parking deck across the street. I saw the tornado to my left, and the wind caught me and threw me down. And as I got up on one knee, I looked up and saw um, lots of debris spinning. A limb struck her, flipped her over, a frightening sight for husband Ken as he reached the shelter. I really wondered if my wife was going to make it through it or not, because when I looked back and saw her, she was on the ground. And at that time, I don't think that the tornado was probably 100 feet away from her. Troy Ann considers herself lucky, especially when she saw damage further in the park. Shirley Roberts rode out the twister right across from one camper that was totally destroyed. Glass breaking, trees falling, limbs. Our trailer was sucking in and out. We were on the floor. But again, thankfully, the injuries were not reported to be seriously or life-threatening. Now, cleanup from the damage has been the order of the day here on the Grand Strand. There's a lot of attention on us here on Ocean Boulevard. A look from TV13's mast cam shows you the number of television broadcast trucks from across the Carolinas here telling this story. Again, a lucky story that no one was injured. But today, the cleanup has begun. TV13's Marcy Rubin is live with more on that. Marcy? From North Myrtle Beach to south of Myrtle Beach and everywhere in between. It's time to pick up the pieces. We've had city crews out cleaning up since about 6 o'clock this morning. We're trying to pick up the debris, get things back to normal here on this portion of Ocean Boulevard. Law enforcement is out helping with the cleanup and they're also dealing with the traffic that comes along with it. There seems to be a lot of people in town, a lot of people wanting to come by here and check out the damages and see, see what's going on. So that's been our, our biggest concern uh, for the police department. The rest of the city is having a, a heck of a time out there cleaning up the beach, trying to make sure that uh, they pick up as much as debris as possible and get some of the broken glass up there. Heavy cleanup is needed at First Avenue and Ocean Boulevard. Damage so bad, two hotels were evacuated. Guests at Bar Harbor and Lands End were allowed back in their rooms to do some housekeeping of their own before heading to other hotels or going home. Many of the tourists weren't going to let Mother Nature spoil their vacation. We, in, we come here every year and we stay here with a, a group of people and it's a lot of fun and we always have a good time. It's just one of those things. We didn't get hurt. We were fine. We weren't here to be traumatized. Um, people are being very nice to us. Yeah. Are we coming to me? Are we coming? Yeah. We're going to get a home. Okay. And so that's what really matters. Nearby home and business owners are also doing some housekeeping. It's going to be a long process for some, but the memories of what caused all this damage are going to long outlast 
putting it back together. Now, again, we're standing um, right in front of the Bar Harbor Hotel. You can see the one we were just talking about just a few minutes ago. Um, people were allowed back in earlier today to get some of their belongings, and all of the people are out safe and sound. We want to talk a little bit about the money that this storm has caused, the damages that were caused. The city estimates right now, Mark Crew from the Myrtle Beach City, um, says that we, we're looking at preliminary reports of about $8 million in damages, most of that about $6.5 million to um, structures, to properties, and a lot of the rest of that to cars. There were a lot of car damages uh, during this storm. Again, the cleanup will continue. You've got tons of people on the beach on Long Ocean Boulevard, people in their homes, outside their homes, in their hotels, and their businesses. And this is going to take a little bit, a little bit of time to clean up. But luckily, we're going to keep saying it. No one was badly hurt. And uh, we, got a, we, got away, we got away lucky on this one. Mitch? All right. TV 13's Marcy Rubin live here on Ocean Boulevard. Thank you, Marcy. South Carolina Governor Jim Hodges flew to Myrtle Beach today and got an up-close look at the damage right here in this area. Around 2 o'clock, Hodges met with some of the hotel owners and guests. One couple lost their car, as Marcy mentioned, to the storm. That was around the First Avenue and Ocean Boulevard area here. But Hodges says he doesn't want news of this event to scare off potential tourists. Goodness, there was uh, no loss of life yesterday. Uh, but tornadoes are a rarity along Myrtle Beach, and uh, we're back to normal today. Uh, working hard to repair the damage and wanting to help uh, folks who suffer damage, but uh, the beach life is back to normal. The Governor Hodges says he's going to try to get some federal aid to help recover some of the damages that have been suffered here on Ocean Boulevard with the hotels here, Spring Maid Beach further down, uh, a lot of damage, but fortunately no injuries. With all the damage we've seen, we got very lucky when it came to injuries. There were no fatalities and no major injuries reported despite the number of twisters that hit the area yesterday. The hospitals say they saw mostly minor cuts and bruises related to flying debris. Doctors advise that you wear shoes and watch out for broken glass and metal. All right, thank you very much, Mitch. Well, the skies do seem to have cleared since yesterday's severe storm. Meteorologist Melinda Banks joins us now from our Myrtle Beach studio. And Melinda, I know we don't see a lot of tornadoes in this area, so how exactly does one work? Well, Kaylin, I'm going to use my tornado bottle to explain this. This is a tornado much like what we saw here on the Grand Strand yesterday. Yesterday's tornado actually started out as a water spout. A water spout is the same thing as a tornado, except it is over the water instead of the land. Once the water spout made landfall, it was then a tornado. A tornado begins as a violent rotating column of air that is moving horizontally in the lower atmosphere. The funnel clouds that you see with a tornado are caused when the winds within the thunderstorm lift that column of air up. Simultaneously, there will be increased wind speeds with height as well and a change in wind direction with the height. Tornadoes are very different from hurricanes. They only last a few minutes and they are not named. With a hurricane, you have time to make preparations, whereas with a tornado, you only have minutes to react. Caitlin? All right, thank you, Melinda. We'll check back with you later for an extended forecast. And our tornado coverage is not over yet. We'll check back in with Mitch Davis a little later in the show. He will bring you another update on today's cleanup efforts. Well, the PD gets a tornado of its own tonight. James Brown himself, the godfather of soul, is the opening act at the Carolina Amphitheater. TV 13's Caroline Leiters joins us live from the Florence Newsroom with that story. Caroline? Well, Kaylin, this is a huge night for Marion. Uh, the county had the highest unemployment rate in the state for more than a year, and along comes a 27,000-seat amph amphitheater, the promise of new jobs, and then tonight, James Brown. Kick on the lights and heat up the grill. Good old vegetable. The godfather of soul is coming to the PD. I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. Da -na 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 -na. The Carolina Amphitheater snagged James Brown for opening night. But hours before the show, the only sounds are greening the grass, setting the stage, and bringing out enough food to satisfy thousands. Best fries, this side of South Carolina. 5,000 hamburgers, 4,000 hot dogs, and 500 sausage dogs sitting in that warehouse over there, so I'm hoping that it goes. And so is Marion County, banking on the Carolina Amphitheater for jobs and for strength, and hoping that its promoter's legal woes don't taint the outcome. They've invested a lot of money here, so we're hoping the little bit that we invested will go a long way with them. And vendors themselves invested $25,000 for each item they sell, giving Carolina Amphitheater 50% up front, the other half after three shows. Why'd you do it? Uh, to have a lot of fun, make a little money. And hope that big names keep coming to Little Marion, bringing in big appetites and big money. 
Now, the gates open at 5 o'clock tonight, so they've been open for an hour, and if you have tickets, you can go right on in. Um, if you don't have tickets, you can still buy them there. Uh, there will be an opening act, and promoters say that they hope that James Brown goes on by 8 o'clock. We will have complete coverage of this at 11. Reporting live from our Florence newsroom, I'm Caroline Leiters, TV 13 News. All right, thank you very much, Caroline. Florence County investigators have new evidence in a hit-and-run case. 18-year-old Adam Dabb was hit and killed on Paper Mill Road on June 2nd. Dabb landed in the road and was hit again by two tractor trailers. Those two drivers stopped, but the first driver did not. Investigator Kenny Boone says a man has come forward with some potentially major information. The eyewitness says he saw a mid-sized black car around the same place and the same time that Adam Dabb was killed. And he says the car's windshield was smashed. Investigators are following this lead and are asking you to call the sheriff's office if you have any more information. And investigators have a warrant out on a suspect connected to a bank robbery in Florence. Captain Todd Tucker of the Florence County Sheriff's Office says Robert Reddick of Lamar has been charged with armed robbery. The FBI and local investigators say Reddick robbed the Centura Bank on West Palmetto on Monday. If you live in South Carolina, insurance fraud could be eating at your wallet. The Palmetto State has the second highest rate of insurance fraud in the nation, according to the State Insurance Fraud Bureau. Only Florida has more cases referred for prosecution, and this is not a victimless crime. In fact, South Carolina insurance fraud costs the state $2 billion a year. That's about $300 for each person. Premiums that we pay have got to have a little bit extra added in to cover the cost of fraud. And that's how it affects us. South Carolina has two SLED agents who investigate insurance fraud. This number is higher in many other states. Well, it is the middle of summer here in the Carolinas, and that means there are plenty of events taking place in our area. Coming up, you'll see why tens of thousands of people headed to this local festival. But first, here's a live look at the Grand Strand. Melinda will be back a little later in the show with a complete look at your forecast. Stay with us. Tornadoes to sunny skies. We've certainly seen it all over the past two days. To get a better look at what the future holds, we turn to meteorologist Melinda Banks in our Myrtle Beach studio. How's it looking, Melinda? Well, Caitlin, yes, we had more tranquil weather today, and that was really good news. Looks like clouds are working their way back into our area. Will those clouds bring us a chance for rain? I'll have all those details coming up in just a few minutes. Welcome back. The sun is finally shining on the Grand Strand and that warmed those temperatures up and we're a little warm right now. Look at this, 81 degrees on the Grand Strand, 84 degrees inland in both Lumberton and Florence. The current satellite image shows we do have mainly clear skies across most of the Grand Strand. Some clouds off the coast and some clouds out here to the west. This is actually our next disturbance that's going to drop down and this will give us increasing clouds for tomorrow and a better chance for rain. But right now, Storm Tracker 13 live. Doppler radar shows as the Doppler radar makes a live scan coming across the PD going into the border bell area and around the Grand Strand you can see we are quiet and there is no rainfall to speak of now across the southeast where is it raining? We'll see again. I guess we're not going to see the southeast, but we'll go ahead and look at future track and the forecast. And we'll see as we head off to church tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Here's that moisture and those increasing clouds that I was just talking about. Should be here just in time for that uh, trip to church tomorrow morning. And then we will continue on in the forecast on into uh, tomorrow night. And again, still lots of moisture. And notice that green color. That's giving us that chance for rain late in the day. But then as we head into Monday, all that moisture starts to scoot off of the coast. Maybe just a few isolated clouds here and there. Now, the rest of your forecast for this evening is shaping up like this. Expect low temperatures, kind of comfortable for this time of year. Dropping down into the mid to upper 60s under partly cloudy skies. We'll see that patchy fog developing uh, towards the early morning hours. And then for tomorrow, increasing clouds with a good chance for rain and thunderstorms late in the day. Another warm one, though. Our temperatures will be up near 90 degrees. Now, at the beach, we'll see southeasterly winds right around 10 miles per hour. Waves 2 to 3 feet. The surf temperature 82. We have a next high tide coming up at 947. Your extended forecast is very much summer-like. Look at those very hot temperatures. Highs reaching into the lower 90s under partly cloudy skies with a good chance for those afternoon thunderstorms. So 
again, very summer-like. And the summer-like trend will stay with us with those warmer temperatures. And the extended forecast as we head into Monday, or excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday. I apologize for not having that uh, graphic available. We'll see. We do eventually dry out, but our temperatures do remain dry. Caitlin? All right. It looks like summer to me, Melinda. <laughs> Thanks very much. Dale Earnhardt Jr. This is TV 13 News at 11. Coverage you can count on. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Caitlin Schechter reporting from Florence. Mitch Davis has the night off. Mother Nature made a mess in Myrtle Beach and today was the day to clean up after her. Law enforcement officers joined firefighters, city crews, residents and tourists. They hit the beach and the streets to pick up debris, glass and other items that were left behind after yesterday's storm. Crews from the electric and phone companies were also out all day and night. All were praised for working so fast and getting things back to normal so quickly. Right. We've got an extraordinary team here in Horry County that, that knows how to respond to situations like this because this is the lifeblood of our economy. Tourism, not only for Horry County, but the entire state. And we just want folks to know that we're up and running. And uh, the city crews have just done a fantastic job. They've been out all night and all day today cleaning up and getting debris up. Santee Cooper's working hard. We'll be back to normal by Monday. Mark Crua of the city of Myrtle Beach says early estimates put damages at about $8 million. Nearly $6.5 million is property damage and about one and a half is from car damage. Yesterday's storms hit at the peak of the summer tourist season on the Grand Strand. And as TV 13's Mitch Davis shows us, that means lots of people saw the twisters and captured them on tape. It's coming here. It's coming this way. Thankfully, this is not a killer twister bearing down on the Tropical Winds Hotel at 9th Avenue South. Robert Balkum and his family are vacationing here from Monroe, North Carolina. And I could see the wind started to get up and uh, things started flying. And then I seen a funnel cloud. And then uh, everybody's trying to get me in the room and I was videotaping it. <laughs> Some of it's kind of shaky, but uh, that was pretty hectic. He wasn't the only one who saw the funnel cloud. TV 13 photographer Mark Odian saw this near the airport. And this was the scene over the NASCAR theme park. And from downtown Myrtle Beach between 7th and 9th Avenue South, many who saw it prayed it stayed over water. But that twister, or perhaps another one, did not stay completely offshore. Here at the Bar Harbor Hotel, a funnel cloud did this kind of damage to one of the buildings here. And tonight, two hotels are closed to guests. But for Robert Balkum's family, there were no injuries, just a close brush with Mother Nature to share back in Monroe. I have a story to tell. <laughs> I have a beach trip story. <laughs> in Myrtle Beach, Mitch Davis, TV 13 News. South Carolina Governor Jim Hodges flew to Myrtle Beach today and got an up-close look at the damage right here in this area. Around 2 o'clock, Hodges met with some of the hotel owners and guests. One couple lost their car to the storm. That was around First Avenue and Ocean Boulevard. But Hodges does not want to scare off potential tourists. Uh, but tornadoes are a rarity along Myrtle Beach, and uh, we're back to normal today, uh, working hard to repair the damage and wanting to help. Uh, folks who've suffered damage, but uh, the beach life is back to normal. Uh, people are enjoying themselves along the beach. And... Now, Governor Hodges says he will try to get some kind of federal aid to help recover from the damage, but he did not promise anything specific. Along with the twisters, the Grand Strand also saw some heavy rains. Tonight, beach advisories are out for large portions of the area. The South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control suggests you do not swim 200 feet above or below Withers Swash. That's at 4th Avenue South in Myrtle Beach. An advisement is also out for all of North Myrtle Beach. That's including an area from 62nd Avenue North in Cherry Grove, southward to 48th Avenue South in Windy Hills. And for all parts of Atlantic Beach, as well as the town of Briarcliff. While swimming is not recommended, other uses of the beach are not affected. Fortunately, things were much calmer this afternoon. To get a look at the rest of our weekend forecast, we turn to meteorologist Melinda Banks. She's joining us live from the Myrtle Beach studio. How you doing, Melinda? Hi, Caitlin. All is well here and finally quiet and tranquil and actually pretty nice out there this evening. The humidity is down and that was what made for a pretty nice day for today. We'll see on the satellite image cloud-wise 
nothing to speak of, but increasing clouds from the west. So we'll see in the forecast overnight tonight, we'll see some patchy fog developing, those temperatures dropping down into the 60s. Then tomorrow, increasing clouds and a better chance for rain as we head into the afternoon. So, Caitlin, looks like your typical summer forecast. All right, thanks very much for those festivities. Melinda Banks joins us now from our Myrtle Beach studio. And Melinda, I hope there is more sunshine in our forecast. Well, I wish I could give it to you, Caitlin, but it looks like clouds are going to come into the area, and those clouds will bring us a chance for rain and thunderstorms. I'll have all those details coming up in just a few minutes. We finally had some tranquil weather here on the Grand Strand today. Looks like things could get fired up again tomorrow afternoon. I'll have all those details in just a minute. But right now in Florence, we have a reading of 73 degrees. And check this out, the dew point, 66. That's a measure of moisture in the atmosphere. This number could be a lot worse for this time of year. And that's actually what's making it feel, you know, kind of nice out there. Same thing on the Grand Strand, really not that bad. Again, it could be a little worse. Temperature of 76 degrees up into Lumberton around the border belt 73 degrees and very comfortable evening out there with southwesterly winds around 7. Now the satellite image across the Carolinas shows mainly clear skies across most of the eastern Carolinas. We have some clouds off the coast and then we have more clouds out around the mountains. Now eventually these clouds will work its way into our area by the early morning hours and tomorrow we'll see increasing clouds. But right now these clouds are not the rain making type. Storm Tracker 13 live Doppler radar shows that as the Doppler radar is making a live scan coming across the border belt moving into the Grand Strand area, you will notice no colors on the map so that means no rainfall we should stay dry at least until late tomorrow afternoon now we'll check things out across the southeast and we will see again very tranquil weather all across the southeast from the carolinas all the way down across the deep south just a few isolated leftover showers on the sea breeze down here across the panhandle of florida and then you can see across the mountains right here are clouds in the area and we'll see Currently, again, frontal boundary down here to our south, high pressure building in from the north and east. That's what's keeping us dry right in this area. But we have disturbances coming down uh, higher up in the atmosphere, and that's what's causing these clouds to come into the area. And we'll see on future tracks starting the forecast around 12 a.m. Look what happens right here as we head into 9 a.m. You're heading off to church. Notice this big area of green right here. That means some rain volume. And then as we head further into the day on Sunday afternoon, notice the green comes right through our area and then we'll have more green and even some yellow here. That's some he real heavy activity. So by tomorrow afternoon, again, keep the, your eye on the sky because you may be hearing the rumbles of thunder around the inland areas all the way down to the Grand Strand. And then as we head into Monday, we try and clear out, but again, still some clouds around and mainly a chance for afternoon thunderstorms. So not so bad as you head back to work. Now the rest of your forecast is shaping up like this. Expect our low temperatures, pretty pleasant for this time of year to drop down into the mid to upper 60s and we'll see partly cloudy skies with patchy fog developing late. Then for tomorrow, a little bit warmer compared to today, a little bit more humidity will return. So we'll see increasing clouds and then that chance for the late day thunderstorms, highs near 90. Now at the beach, this is certainly the place to be if you want some relief from the heat. Uh, look at that surf temperature, a pretty comfortable 83 degrees, but don't forget that sunscreen because we do have a rather high UV index. Your extended forecast is looking typical summer-like. Look at those highs all the way up into the 90s with a chance for those afternoon isolated thunderstorms. And even as we head into later on in the week, into next weekend, pretty much same old, same old, partly cloudy skies, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, but all in all, it looks like we're going to be a little dry as we work our way into the rest of the forecast. So, Caitlin, typical summer weather. All right, well, not so bad. We'll take it. That's right. Thanks so much, Melinda. Thank you. Well, coming up in just two minutes.